We're going to just uh, play some songs while you come in and hope that you learn them and we'll be blessed by them.
God of our salvation, who fills my soul with sweet relief. Every idol from its throne For Christ is Lord and Christ alone To God all praise and glory 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 Sing along To God all praise and glory God all praise and glory to God all praise and glory to God all praise and
I'd like to hear a few people just to stand up and very loudly just say in one sentence what you are praying that God will give you this week at CB Alive. Somebody. Guidance in the next chapter. Who's next? I pray that I'll stay at camp. Amen. <laughs> Get more bread? Bread. bread. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you want to pray you get more friends? Friends. Okay. She wants more friends. Help you stop lying. Were you lying when you said that? Well, you made one good start on that. The sermon to fill, fulfill his will. Amen. Amen. It sounds like we have a great sense of anticipation. And now, the singing company is going to lead us in worship. All right, let's stand together as we worship the Lord.
I was sinking deep in sin Far from the peaceful shore Very deeply stained within Sinking to rise no more But the master of the sea Heard my despairing cry From the waters lifted me Now save them my love
mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever and ever, just as he promised our ancestors. So peace. All right, well, welcome to CBLI 2018. My name's uh, my name. My name is Mike, and I'm going to be with the teen track. Golf clap for the teens, because just a golf clap. They don't need to get their heads too big, and I, I care about sensitive ears. And we just listen to loud music, so we'll just we'll keep it to golf claps for the rest of the time. But I I know that I'm going to be with the teen track all week, which is the best track. So it's, the golf. Golf clap, golf clap, all right. I don't know, I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are thinking, why did they give us the teen track guy on like the first night? And some of you are thinking, isn't this the night where they just do like the rules and stuff and we don't actually have to listen to a message? Some of you are thinking, why did they give us this guy? Because I remember this guy when he used to go to CBLI and he broke all the rules, so why the first night this guy? And if you're thinking any of those things, then that hurts because I... <laughs> I have feelings, which is why tonight we're going to talk about how hurtful your thoughts can be. I'm just kidding. That's not what we're talking about. We're actually going to talk a lot about what we just, what we just sang, about how we can be reconciled or have peace with God and with one another. Because I think if there's a way we can kick off CBLI 2018, it's going to be that way. But tonight, I know that most of you just want to get to what's next, which for the teens in here probably means getting to find out who your camp girlfriend or your camp boyfriend's going to be. And here's the deal. If you're not into the camp girlfriend or the camp boyfriend thing, 
You're probably just looking forward to whoever you're going to kiss by the end of the week. And here's, here's what I know. I know you teens, you came and you want to get closer in your relationship with Jesus, but you also just want to find someone to kiss. I know how it works. And, and adults, before you start judging, I just want to get you in the way back machine, back to when you were 16 and at camp, and all you wanted to do was find someone to kiss. And here's the deal. I, it, it's still a thing. I'm a high school pastor, and I'm glad that they, they brought the lights up because at my home church, it's like dark when I speak, and there's just something about high schoolers in rows where the lights are down and the lights are all up front. I don't know if they just think it's a movie theater all the time, but like, they just want to kiss each other, and so we put spotters in the back at my church to just make sure, but anyways, thanks for keeping the lights. It's, it just helps. But let me get into what we're talking about, because tonight we're talking about your words and how powerful they can be and kind of how do we manage this idea of getting right with God and getting right with each other. And before you start thinking about how uh, anyone else, I just I want to give you like, I want to give you the meat and I want to give you like the main idea and the application in one sentence. All right, I'm just going to drop it all and then we'll spend the rest of the night talking about it. So here is the sentence. If you take notes, you're going to want to write this down. Here it is. Everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak. Be quick to listen and slow to speak. And some of you are already thinking about how much you, you wish someone else was listening to this. Some of you are like nudging your spouse and you're like, hey, you got to pay attention because... I, and some of you are looking for like your eighth grade daughter and you're like, is she on her phone or is she listening to this guy? And, and let me just tell you, whoever, maybe some of you are thinking, is my officer, is they, are they listening to this? Here's the deal. Tonight, yeah, okay. Tonight is about, is not about them. It doesn't matter who them is. Tonight's not about them. I really want you tonight to think about you and your words. Be quick to listen and slow to speak. And if you could figure out, if, if I like just stop the message right here, and you could figure out how to apply that one sentence into your relationships, it would, it would help you through any possible conflict you might find yourself in. And if two people in a relationship or two people in a conflict could apply this one principle, I mean, it, it could be a game changer in our churches, in our neighborhoods. And, and I, just, I just really believe that this one idea is so pivotal for the way that we handle like relationships with each other. You just, I just really want you to hold on to this tonight. And uh, if you grew up in church, you know that I didn't come up with that line. I wish I was wise enough. I wish I was smart enough. But I actually stole it from a really famous guy named James. And James had an even more famous older brother named Jesus. Maybe you heard of him. And I cannot ever, like, I can't hold back whenever I bring up James because this is so incredible for me because James, at some point, put his faith in his older brother as his Lord and Savior. Now, I don't know if you have an older brother. Some of you know my older brother. My older brother used to, like, sit on my leg and fart. Like, if he, for him to convince me that he was the Son of God, like, it would have taken a whole heck of a lot. And I, my guess is it's the same for James. But for James, look, there was something that happened. I mean, he saw his brother on a hill, crucified. My guess is that he went with his mother as they watched th them put his brother into a tomb, embalmed, wrapped up in cloths. And then the next week, they like got lunch together. I'll tell you what, if my brother did that, I would probably put my faith in him too. And so James, who didn't believe his brother was who he said he was until after he rose from the dead, emerges in the first century as like the number one guy in the church in Jerusalem. And he picks up this nickname, James the Just. And James the Just, 30 years, about 30 years after his brother rose from the dead, James the Just would be stoned to death because of like some jealousy and some conflict between the church and the Jewish temple. I mean, talk about bad things happening to good people. I mean, he was stoned to death, but before they killed him, he wrote a letter to the church. And in that letter, he outlined some principles that could guide the way that we handle relationships with each other, especially when they come in conflict. And 
so that's what we're going to walk through today. This is how he starts it. He says, he says this, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this, which means if you take notes, you should probably write down some of the stuff that's about to happen. And if you don't, like, you should at least like sit up straight and make me feel like you're listening. He says, everyone. So who are you talking to, James? He's like, I'm talking to all y'all. And then here's where I plagiarized this line. Everyone should be quick to listen, which doesn't make any sense. I mean, think about that line, quick, quick to listen. I mean, I get the whole idea of like listening or hearing, but how do you speed that up? Like, how do I speed up my hearing? And it's like this weird phrase, and I don't know why he used it, but I like to think that he used it because he knows he's writing a letter and people get to this point in the letter and they're like skimming through and he wants you to like pause because this is important. And, and when you get to a weird phrase like this, like maybe he's hoping that his audience would reread this and maybe, maybe highlight it or something. And what he's trying to say is that in relationships, it's important to prioritize listening. Like before anything else, before you do anything else, especially in conflict, you ought to listen. Which is a great line because that's exactly what all of us want other people to do for us, right? We all want other people to listen to us. And that, if you follow Jesus, is a great thing because Jesus said, do to others what God through Christ has done to you. And so if we want people to listen to us, and that's true, like I want to be listened to, I want to be understood. And so James says, well, then you need to prioritize listening. Be quick to listen. And then here's the next line. Be slow, like way slow to speak. So when it comes to other people's words, be quick to listen. When it comes to your own words, like, like wait. Like you, you probably can't wait too long. Like be slow, like so slow so slow to, be speak, to speak. And if you have to say something, right? Like, like if, if someone's just kind of going on and on and on and they're bringing up past hurts and all this stuff and you're like, I just, I gotta say something. Can I just tell you this? Would you ask a question? To which you might be like, well, Mike, if I ask a question, that's just gonna like get them talking more and it's gonna send them down more rabbit trails and bringing up other stuff. And if that's hard for you, can, can I ask you to do this? Like, ask three questions. Come with like four or five questions prepared. Just keep asking questions and providing opportunities for them to go on and on and go down more rabbit trails. Because your responsibility relationally is not to speak, is to listen. Your responsibility relationally is to be quick to listen. And the quicker, you, the quicker they are to speak, the quicker you ought to be to listen because the quicker you are to listen, the more you learn. Now, if you're a parent, can we give a golf clap for the parents? Yeah, we clap for the teens. Okay, we can clap for our parents. I'm not a parent, but I have two really awesome parents. They taught me a lot. If you're a parent, how different would your relationship with your kids be if you asked some questions as they kind of go on and on and on? And students, this is, this is really important, whatever I'm going to say next. You should write this down. Honestly, you should write this down because this is important. If you want to blow your parents' mind, if you want to see your parents, like, pass out, I want you to write this down, and I don't want you to try this this week because then I'll get the credit for it. But, like, a week after camp, after they've forgotten everything that I've said, you'll get the credit for this. This is what I want you to do. The next time, you're getting kind of like the dad talk or the mom talk. That's what you should just do. Just say, hey, Dad, I don't really understand where you're coming from, but I want to. Do you think maybe you could, like, explain that in a little different way? Do you think you, you, may, you maybe could, like, show me so that I can understand where you're coming from? Here's what's going to happen. Your dad's going to fall over, and you're going to run and catch him. You'll be the hero of his story because he's going to be blown away because nobody does that. No, we just argue and argue, back and forth, argue. But if you can learn to, like, hit the pause button, if you can learn to ask some questions, if you can be quick to listen and, like, way slow to speak, everything changes relationally. 
Now, my worst pastoring moments, and I've had a few, but my worst pastoring moments have always been when I've done like the typical pastor thing, the typical student pastor thing. And and maybe parents, you might think of this as kind of the typical parent thing. But I'm a high school pastor, so I got high schoolers sitting in front of me, and I'm thinking like I've got like a bucket of wisdom back here and a bucket of experience and a bucket of insight, and I even got like a bucket of age. And I'm like, you don't even have frontal lobe development. And I'm just like... Will you just stop talking so I can dump my bucket of wisdom on your life? So I can dump my bucket of insight on your life? And then I sit back and I'm like, why isn't anyone listening to me? And the reason why is because I'm driving them away. Look, I've learned this the hard way. That I can be right and I can write someone like right out those doors. You can be right and you can be so, so right. And you can write your kids, your spouse, your employee, your friends. You can write them right out of the relationship. Because I want to be listened to. I want to be understood. And I might actually be open to your ideas and your opinions if I think that you partially care to understand where I'm coming from. And we've seen this because we've all been on both sides of this. Students, Tell me you haven't seen your parents' eyes like glaze over as you try to explain yourself. (laughs) Yeah. And parents, tell me you haven't like been frustrated as your kids like texting their friends while you're trying to like give them your talk or like they're just checked out. And it's it's like you, you leave going like, I know I'm right. Why can't we communicate? And the reason why, James would say, is because... You're not quick to listen. You're quick to speak. You should be quick to listen and like slow to speak. And if you get those two right, the third one comes easier. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And slow to become angry is both a result and a decision. If you're quick to listen and slow to speak, you'll be angry less. And if you decide up front to ask some questions and to prioritize learning it will be easier for you to decide to not be angry. And anger, what he's talking about here, is kind of any kind of anger. Some of you are all too familiar with like the blow up, out of control anger. He's talking about that, but he's also talking about kind of the anger that I'm more familiar with, which is kind of like I sulk around the house with a pouty face and I wait for Brittany, my wife, to be like, what's wrong? So I can be like, nothing. But really, I just want to control the mood. I want to control the moment. I want to be able to get back in control so I get to make the decisions and I get to control how she feels and how she acts. And James is saying that's just so bad for the relationship. And one way to bypass that kind of anger, whether it's outward or kind of inward, is to understand where the other person is coming from. Be quick to listen and slow. To speak. So James kind of has an equation. If you're a mathematician, you might like this. It's like this. He says, the longer you listen, the more you'll learn, and the less angry you'll be. The longer you learn, the less angry you'll be. And this is why this works. This is why this works. And this is going to be super obvious. But I'm going to say it because sometimes it's important to be reminded of the obvious so we don't get off track from what we know we should do. This is why this works. It's because everything that everyone does makes sense to them. And everything that everyone says makes sense to them. And everything that everyone believes makes sense to them. So the next time you find yourself saying, well, I just don't know why they would ever say that. I don't know why he would ever do that. I don't know why anyone would believe that. Who needs the education? I'll give you a hint. Each one of those sentences started with, I don't know. So maybe I have some learning to do. Anyone who's ever been in a relationship or anyone who's ever argued with their parents or their kids or their spouse, come on. When you win an argument, what do you really win? Well, I won the argument. Yeah, what did you get? A trophy? Well, I don't know. I won. They left. And I'm still here. They said I was right. You won the argument. 
and you lost the relationship. And parents, this is key because you can be so, so right. And you can write your kids right out that door. And James is saying, come on. God doesn't take sides. God says he, he's, he's not on this side or this side. God want, doesn't want you to be right at each other. He wants you to be right with each other. And this is so beautiful because it draws us in to Jesus and his command, which was to love each other as I have loved you. And think about it. Jesus didn't come to be right at us. If he did, that would have taken all about 30 seconds. He would have just come down and been like, I'm right. And then would have wasted the, le- the rest of the 30 seconds with some zingers or some like snappy answers to stupid questions like he did with the Pharisees. Right? If Jesus came to be right, he wouldn't have had to die on the cross if it was just to be right at us. And James says to you and me, my brother didn't come to be right at you. He came to reconcile you to God and to each other. He came to make peace or make it right with you. And so he says to me, to you and to me, like, quit being right at each other and figure out how to be right with each other. Well, how do I do that? Well, thanks for asking. You'd be quick to listen and like way, way slow to speak. If the two of you aren't right, it doesn't matter who's right. Because you don't win a fight in a marriage. And you don't win a fight with your parents. And you don't win a fight with your kids. You don't win a fight with your friends. There is no winner if things aren't right between you. In fact, being right can make it worse. So be quick to listen and slow to speak. Now, let me just make James's last point, and then I'll get you on to like hot dogs and your kids and whatever's next. All right. James says, therefore, get rid of all moral filth. Now, the Greek word here for get rid of is the same as like take off like your clothes. He's saying like, or we'll just say coat because then it feels more appropriate. Okay. So like, He says, take off that, like, I got to be in control, and I've got to be right, coat. And then he says, says, take the moral filth off. And you know why he uses the moral filth here? Because when we're kind of in an argument or conflict, and we're just kind of all talking, it quickly becomes a moral issue. I mean, think about just violence between friends or or within a family. Doesn't it always start as, like, words that just kind of escalate out of control? And we don't even have to be close to each other anymore. Like we can have distance between us because we've got like the internet and Facebook where you can share like fake news and all this stuff and comment on people's stuff from far away. And all of a sudden there's all this like anger in the air. And the next time we see each other, there's like actual physical violence. And and it's like all this moral filth just like floating around in our relationships because everybody's talking and nobody's listening. I'm right. I demand my rights. And James is like, come on. If you're going to follow Jesus, you got to like take that off. He says, let me tell you something else you got to take off. The evil that's so prevalent. You know what evil is, right? That's like a desire to harm. In, In an argument, that's like the desire to get back or pay you back. And, and James says, this is like what epitomizes your culture. This is so prevalent. And what he's saying is like, when you realize in the middle of an argument that you're putting on that, I got to be right, and I want to control you and convict you, when you're putting on that, I want to get even, when you're putting that jacket or that coat back on, he's like, you, you need to hit the pause button. Take that thing off. Because he's like, I know where this leads, and it's to never to anything good. Because even if I win, the relationship loses. He says, let me give you an alternative. Take that thing off. Let me tell you what to put on. This is so powerful. He says, and humbly. I love that word. He says, take off. I got to be right and put on humility. You know what humility says? It says, you are more important than me. And we are more important than me. And your needs are more important than my needs. And in an argument, it says reconciling is more important than me getting my way. And and then he throws this in as if to argue that this is like even more important than you ever could have imagined. He says, and I humbly accept the word planted in you. He's writing to the church and he's like, you've accepted Jesus, right? 
then you get this big picture scale. We're talking like person to person. We're talking like, like how to handle individual conflict. But if you've accepted Jesus, you understand the big picture. That God sent his son into the world to die for you. That he put your needs in front of his own. And now he's just asking you to do the same. Right? Well, yeah. So then do that. Well, I don't know how. James is like, well, let me help you. Be quick to listen. And like, slow to speak. Step back into the most basic truth that you accepted when you accepted Jesus' humility on the cross. And he ends it with this line, which can save you. And I know there's some eternal implications attached to that, but I just want to talk about the like right now implications. Because this principle If you can apply this, this could save your relationships. This could save your marriage. This could save your relationship with your boss or your son or your daughter or your parents or your friend. This could save you from regret. This could save you from having to apologize like for the hundredth time. This could save you from making another stupid decision. This could potentially save you from divorce. But the key word is you got to accept this. You've got to embrace this. You got to do something with this. You can't just hear it. And that's where James goes next in his letter, and I wish I could keep going into it. I don't have time. you got to read your Bible, man. That stuff is so good in there. He says, doing this is what makes all the difference. So I'm going to put it all together. Here's what James, the just, the brother of Jesus says. He says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, if you're going to get this right, get rid of, like take off all that moral filth and the evil that's so prevalent and humbly accept, like step back into the basic truth. Humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. So one more time, will you say it with me? Be quick to listen and slow to speak. Don't settle for being right. Make things right. Now, this concept, quick to listen, slow to speak. It's exactly what your heavenly father did for you. He sent his son into the world as one who could not speak. He didn't send his son into the world as a teacher or a preacher or an author or a prophet. He sent his son into the, to the world as a baby who is speechless. And for 30 years, he experienced life. The heartache, the disappointment, the frustration, the persecution, the oppression, the death. And for 30 years, he listened. And then he began to speak. And when he spoke, people flocked. And do you know why people flocked? Because when Jesus spoke, they felt like he got it. They felt like he understood. In fact, Matthew says that the crowds were amazed when Jesus spoke because he did not speak to them like they're teachers of the law. He spoke like a person, and many of you know this, who had a different kind of authority and they felt listened to. And so people who were so far from the type of people we would think would hang out with Jesus were drawn to him. And he was drawn to them. Why? Because he was quick to listen and slow, like 30 years slow to speak. And then he invited us all to follow him. And that invitation stands today. You are invited to become a follower of Jesus. So I'm going to make the invitation super simple. We're kicking off CBLI 2018. And some of you are not right with God. You're not right in your relationship with Jesus. And so we got space here, and this space is going to be here all week, and this space is going to be in your tracks all week. If you need to get right with God, if you need to reconcile with God, don't wait. As soon as you recognize that, come grab someone, grab six or seven people, grab your cabin, 
and come and get reconciled to God. The other invitation is for those of you who are right with God, and my guess is there's quite a few in here who are right with God, but you know you're not right with one another. Jesus came to reconcile us to God and to each other. And if there's someone that you need to get right with, don't wait. Again, like kick off CBLI the right way. Get right with whoever you're at odds with. Maybe that means a phone call to someone tonight. Maybe that means a conversation. Maybe that means you need to do some work and get prepared for when you go home to have a conversation with someone. But that's the invitation, it's super simple. If you need to come and get right with God, come here. If you need to get right with someone, go to that someone.
I spoke a word, you were singing over me. And you have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath,
benediction and then I just have about five announcements so you can stay standing or you can be seated but would you pray with me please Father I thank you for these men and women and young adults I thank you for your word that you presented this evening I thank you for your Holy Spirit that is speaking and I thank you God that uh, we have seen lives starting to change again I pray that for all those that came forward Lord their commitment to you will be real I pray that we will know and feel your presence about us and within us, and then when Satan attacks us, we know that uh, he's not going to have any opportunity to win that battle because we are in your hands and we are your servants. So as we prepare to leave this place in just a few minutes, Lord, I pray that you'll go before us, that you'll protect us, and that you'll guide us and continue to love us, and we, we, may we praise your name in all that we do and all that we say. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just a...
about four or five quick announcements. First of all, to Michael, wherever Michael's at, I just want you to know that I'm on my 47th anniversary of being 16 and I forgot what 16 was like, okay? <laughs> now the real announcements, okay? <laughs> For all camp tonight, there is snacks over at the dining room, and it is hot dogs, okay? I want to also let you know that there will be no brass band this year. <laughs> some of you love that, some of you don't. I'm gonna ask you something personal, and I'm gonna ask that as you uh, enjoy our beautiful campground throughout the week, that as you see trash here and trash there, that you will pick it up and put it in a trash can where it belongs, please. Yeah. There is recreational tournaments, and Doug Leslie, where are you at? Right back here, this handsome young man back there. Follow, okay, maybe you're not handsome. This young man. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's not my type, okay? If his wife would stand, if his wife would stand, she's beautiful. There you go. <laughs> Doug's going to be in the back tonight. If you have not signed up for the tournaments, he's the man to see following this program this evening, please. Uh, for those of you that are on the senior track, I'm in trouble already. Okay. Made me lose my notes. That's what I get for putting my notes on my cell phone, all right? I'm 63, remember that, all right? For those of you that are in the senior high track, breakfast medication is there in the morning, which means breakfast is mandatory for you. All meals, the nurse will be at all meals. If you have other medications, you need to see her at the mealtime as well. Evening meds, need to go to the nurse's station to get your evening meds. You're all adults, you all know whom you are, you need to do the right thing, all right? What else? Uh, the adult, I mean the, the high school, am I correct? The high school track has an afterglow this evening. I'm sorry? Okay, you all heard that. If you didn't, see Barb. <laughs> One last thing, tomorrow morning is church. Come prepared with your heart ready to hear the Lord speak to you again. So come with a grateful heart come with a heart that's willing to seek and to grow, and come with a heart that's willing to praise the Lord. So tomorrow when I see you all, we have a new rule here, a rule that's by Major Mike Mills, and I know that a lot of young people like to break rules. The rule is you're not allowed to smile, okay? So if you're a rule breaker, break that rule and smile whenever you see this ugly mug, all right? God bless you and have a good night tonight. <laughs>